Brothers bit on the psych. It's that time of the week where I don my Sigmund Freud cap and with the help of my trusted panel, delve into the minds of our wonderful housemates. We basically get all psychological on your asses, <laughs> on your bottoms. Uh, right, time to meet the panel. Face up, he's the man I spend every Saturday night with. He's my very own bit on the side, just don't tell Rylan, right? It's Ian Lee! <laughs> gives her very best performance, mainly because she's a performance coach. It's the wonderful Kate Marlowe. Yeah. Yeah. Our next guest is putting the psychological groove into tonight's show. Do we want to funk? Yeah. Yeah. Of course we do. It's Dr Funky. Yeah. And completing tonight's panel, last night you put an end to her stay in the Big Brother house and now, she wants a psychological debrief. It's Jackie Travers! Yeah. Now, before we dig into the minds of our housemates, I think it's time we rewind and look back into the past seven days of Big Brother. Do you agree? Yeah! Yeah! Well, what a week it's been! Here's a little recap of what went down. Dexter said... He's going to streak around the garden. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Who do you dislike within the house? Hazel, Hazel, Hazel. <laughs> I know most of you. Am I hurt? More than you could believe. I want to hold it together, because that's what lads do. Fucking hell. Big Brother does not tolerate aggressive behaviour or language. Aggressive? I accept that. Dave's been removed from the Big Brother house. Oh, baby. Callum, Dexter, Gina, Jackie, and Jack and Joe. I knew we'd be up this week. Is he looking at a bump? Right, I'm going to speak on behalf of Hazel. Do not do this, do not do that. Oh. You're all faking your own way. Oh! <coughs> hello, you two. Just thought I'd come say hello. How are you? Hang on, That's I'm not it. quite finished yet, thank you. <laughs> to be evicted. Jackie. Yeah. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my Right, my mind's fully made up. It's refreshed with the past week's BB action. So let's discuss. Um, Jackie, hello. Hello. Good to see you. How has your first 24 hours out of the Big Brother house been? Absolutely amazing. I've loved every second of it. It's so really good to be out of there. And I've been so busy. I, I, my feet haven't touched the ground. Exactly. Incredibly. Well, hopefully they will at some point. But not just yet. Uh, Dr Funke, were you surprised that Jackie lasted as, as long as she did? No, because I think Jackie was a good housemate. Think about Jackie in the house. She brought in dance. You know, all of us want to have a... She should bring out a dance video, because I would definitely <laughs> yeah, yeah. buy it. We keep plugging it. Yeah, it's going to happen. Honestly. It's going to happen. I mean, she brought that and she did all the cooking. She was like the mother of the house. So I think... I'm not I'm wondering, why did the public vote her out instead of Callum? Because she was a little bit boring. With the greatest respect, though, oh, with the greatest respect, I think this week... No, no, no. I think Ian this week... Lee. I have to be honest. But I think this week, when you had a go at Dexter and a go at Callum, that's but when that's it kind of took off for me. That's when you really started to shine. That's what he was like. Yeah. Uh, well, Kate, you know, yeah. what was the turning point for Jackie? I think the, the real turning point for Jackie was the loss of the right jazz hand. Because mm. th at that point, you know, you, you, it must be very irritating. Mm. It was hot in there. It's intense anyway. And so I think this injury did become a little bit of a burden yeah, for you. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Um, like when you lose mm. something. Jackie, I have to ask, how did uh, breaking your hand affect you? Uh, I've not finished, Jackie. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yes. Did it? Did it make things? Did it kind of bring you down a bit, hurting your arm like that? It did. There's yeah. no question. Yeah, it absolutely did. Mm. But I tried to, to, you know, keep going. But mm. actually, some days I got really down about it. You did really well. Mm. You know, I've lost my voice once a few times. You know, you'd be surprised to believe. <laughs> and um, I, I absolutely felt like I lost my mojo. So yeah. you must have felt the same. I did. I did. But you if know you what? You lost your voice now, AJ. The whole country would breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't. It's cultural.
play for love. Jackie and uh, Dr. Funky, Jackie entered the house as part of a mother-daughter duo. Are we going to see a different side of Charlie now that Mum's gone, do you think? I think in 24 hours we're already seeing a different side of Charlie. Yeah. Now, what I think with Charlie is, she, she, you know, now, you know we're saying we don't know who's going to win. Charlie can have potential to be in the final three, but she needs to play it safely. She's got two people that are a adore her how she plays the game will determine how long she stays in the house but we are going to see a different charlie i, I think, think she's going to be more yeah i'm going to say she's going to be it's more good, free though. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I want her to do that i really do because now she can shine i mean yeah. she has been shining but now she really mm. needs to shine mm. amazing yeah. well, i can't wait to see the glow stick of charlie um <laughs> well here's what dan made of last night's shenanigans well, I didn't want to get involved in anything last night, to be honest, but then, you know, I heard you and Dex talking on and off, like, and to be honest with you, I thought you came across like a cock and I thought you came across... Well, I, well, know, so. I knew that you, Hazel and Charlie would have been able to hear that conversation. I wasn't listening to it all because I didn't I, want to, to be honest, but I heard bits of it and I thought he was... He, come on, he's a dick, yeah, I know. He's, he, he, he got on my nerves last night, to be honest, so... Yeah, me too, but... Um, but no, go. I thought... I did, like, the bits I did hear in that conversation, I thought... I thought you came across well, Callum, so... Um, he was just, he wanted the conversation, he was banging on and um... Well that's why even when Charlie then started having a go at you, like, I was like, why is she having a go at him and not Dexter? Because like, oh, it was oh, Dexter, yeah, she... in my eyes, that was, brought that conversation on in the kitchen and she was is. having a go at you for it. I was like, yeah, I and it just pissed me off last night, yeah. I was just in a bad mood for some reason, but... Um, yeah. He's a bit of a dick and nothing's changed, I still won't bother with him. And I'm sure on the outside he'd be better than he is in here, but... He's, he thrives on every little bit of drama and gets, tries does. to get involved in every little thing, but it's actually quite embarrassing. It is. <laughs> Jackie, I mean, what do you think about all of that? Well, you know what, Dan is outspoken and, mm. and he speaks his mind and, and you know... I, you're not I have surprised. To say, I'm not surprised at all, yeah. Well, well, you know, t in tonight's episode, we all saw Charlie take control and tell Big Brother who was going to go into the safe house. So, Jackie, do you think that we're seeing a more confident side to Charlie now that you've departed? Yeah, mm. yeah, you probably are. You know, she's 27 years old and now she's, you know, coming into her own. Her mm. mum's gone and now she is going to have a bloody good time. <laughs> Well, let's talk about this week's <laughs> remote control task. It was good, wasn't it? It was absolutely brilliant, this remote control task. Um, Kate, was this, you know, a much-needed relief from, um, you know, the whole Daly and Hazel situation? Uh, absolutely. And I think the, the task was brilliant and, from my point of view, so fascinating to watch because it required them to really perform, mm. to follow instructions and directions, and we saw... It was more revealing than you would have thought for what mm. seemed like a fairly light, yeah. fun task. Mm. Because the people who willingly failed and uh, the people who stuck to it. And, and so you really found out there who, who's got some inner strength and who hasn't. Mm. So Dexter and the twins pass fail, you know? <laughs> oh, right, okay. So you think the twins are weak, okay? Well, the twins um, received a visit from their mum and dad in the task, which was highly emotional for them. You've got to admit, Dr Funke, what did you take of, you know, their reaction? I mean, I got emotional. Didn't anyone else get emotional on that task? Oh, oh, yeah. What do you mean you got emotional? <laughs> did you say, if you got emotional at that, get a fucking life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You didn't have any emotions of that. You just no. saw the love that they had oh. for... Oh, no, I'm a bit they're sorry. 18 oh. years old. I think they're young men, you know. They, they yeah. really behave like great big babies in nappies. No, I yeah. think no. I think what we saw there was the love of the parents. Wasted uh, tears, Dr. Funke. No, they were not wasted. They were <laughs> Listen, real tears. Dex's mum yeah. also entered the house. His reaction was very different mm. from Completely. that of the twins. What does that tell us about Dexter, do you think? In my opinion, I felt that Dexter showed more emotion when we saved him, the public saved him from eviction on those two occasions. His mum came. I know he was supposed to be on pause, but you can still look at the twinkle in the eye. I thought there was a little bit of a distance. We did catch something. I lost a bit of respect. If my mum had come in, I'd gone, fuck this, I'd, I'd, I'd given her a yeah. big hug. I'd have given her a hug and a kiss. Yeah. It's mum. Yeah, it's especially mom. if she lives in Greece. Who come on. Who cares if you get avocado or not? It's mum! <laughs> but this oh. task cuts the men from the boys, Ian, and that, you know, so you've just said which side you'd be on, and, and that's what we saw in the, in the Big Brother house this week. Oh. That's correct. Well, Sophie did well. <laughs> oh, the old is well. Yeah, she's a woman. <laughs> Apart from twins. Now, let's move on to Callum. He's had another tough week and seems to be very isolated. Dr Funke, tell me, what has happened to that man? 
rich man. Callum! <laughs> I think we're all going on about Callum. And, uh, you know, I know what you're saying, Jackie, and I do see something about Callum that sometimes you just feel a little bit uneasy. But what's going on here is that he's trying to retain something. And obviously, people like Jackie are identifying and realising there's certain things about Callum that don't seem right. But he wants to make sure that we, the public, view him how he wants us to view him. Mm. But we're seeing certain things that he's doing that just don't match up. I'm very confused. And, you know, Kate, do you think that we'll see a different side to Callum? Maybe now that Jackie's gone, because you two didn't get on know. at all. all. Um, we, no, because I think what we see with Callum mm. is a non-stop performance, mm. and it mm. changes from that character to that character to that character. Absolutely. According to... He's reading everything, the boos and cheers from outside. This is one clever and devious mm. brain Jackie, at work. Mm. apart from the fact he's boring, dull, irritating, mm. two-faced, yeah. manipulative and aggressive, I think you've said what was your problem now. with Callum? Sorry? What was your problem with him? He's, um, he's got a sight. He's trying too hard mm. and it's always, oh, you only have to ask, you only have to ask, and you think, mm. hang on a minute, somebody tries too hard, there's got to be some underlying a problem there and he is not showing his true colours although he did the other night start yes. to show his true right. colours when I had a go at him and that little bit of aggression started to come out and that's why that he had to was walk away television. <laughs> that, was, that was what you should have done from the start <laughs> I wish I had yeah. I wish so. I had no you was brilliant thanks guys now that's it for part one still to come we'll be joined by Dan's actual boyfriend Matt <laughs> He's going to be assisting us with our inquiries, helping us investigate the intriguing case of Dan the housemate. Plus, we'll be talking to some of you lot in the form room, so catch you in a more. <laughs> a Big Brother's bit on the psych. A show that gives you more psychological insight than a week's stay in the prior room. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> now, it's time to talk about everyone's favourite crime fighter. Not you, Egan. Not you. I'm talking about Detective Dan. And Dan's boyfriend, Matt, has joined our panel to give some extra insight into him. Hello, Matt. remind ourselves of Dan before he went into the house. I am a people person and I do like being a centre of attention, I'm not going to lie, but at the same time I can sit back and take in what's going on around me. Um, I'm quite intuitive, I do get people quite quickly. I can often, I, I'm often right with my first instincts on people. Um, I think I've got a lot of life experience so it's made me quite comfortable. I'm at the best place I think I've ever been in my life as to who I am. And, um, yeah, I'm just comfortable now with who I am and where I'm at. And I feel that other people kind of get that from me. And uh, people open up to me and trust me. I just think I'm a likeable person, really, at the end of the day. Well, Jackie, you know, you've just spent the last five weeks with him. Yeah. Is he the same as... He is on that tape that we've just seen. Absolutely. Dan is a really, really nice guy, and I'm not just saying that because Matt's here, but yeah. he is a fabulous guy. He does take the lead. Uh, he falls into it naturally, mm -hmm. and he is, is very authoritative, and it, he's, you know, people listen to him, and I wouldn't have a bug about that at all. I think he's great. Oh, so do I. Um, Matt, hi. Welcome. Um, what, do you, what do you think of Dan in the house? Yeah, I think he's doing really well. He's coming across like who he is. That, that is what you see is what you get. That is Dan. He's an up and down person, and that's what you, you're seeing. But I wish like he went in that house not being this detective role. I wish he went in no, not telling what his job was. He could have been a postman or something. And then I reckon he'd that would completely change his like story in the house because now I think that's where, where the. Um, leadership role is coming in. Well, it, it's okay. kind of it, it has defined him slightly. You're right, Dan has easily adapted to the role of house leader. Have a look at this. I couldn't come into the house thinking I was going to be like a, a leader or an organiser. I don't want to be telling people what to do. I really, really <laughs> don't. But at the end of the day, someone needs to take the lead sometimes. <laughs> I know, you know. I know. I don't go out of my way to be like the leader, but it just it's just come naturally because of his leadership skills, because of his job, he will instantly sort of like take on that role. And, and if no one's doing the washing up, leave. I'm going to yeah. say someone needs to do the washing yeah. up. He's surprisingly bossy. I think bossy can get confused with just actually. Being a natural leader. You are quite drunk, so do you want to talk in the morning? 
I wouldn't do that. No, I can I say, to be fair, I think Callum's right, Charlie is drunk, and I think she should just go to sleep, and people who want to talk about it tomorrow, if they can, if they if not, just leave it. If you want to take the leave, <laughs> take the it. fucking leave, you but no it. one else does. Uh. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Kate, why has he found this role so easy, do you think? Uh, because I think Dan, um, as he said, he likes people, and so he's likeable mm -hmm. as well. Um, he's very good at sharing. He does take responsibility for things, uh, for what he says and what he does. So in every sense of the word, he is Dan the man. He's a grown-up, and he's got a lot of kiddiewinks in there who, who are spoiled and haven't grown up and don't take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, Matt, what's he like at home? He's not like that. I wouldn't be putting up for none of that if you... <laughs> <laughs> you were the trousers! No, but when we first started going out, like, when, he was at, when I was at uni, I remember, like, he, he would go out for a night out and then we'd all come back and then he would get my friend in the corner and start telling him telling her her life story and make it like he, he, he made her cry and stuff. In a good way, but he's quite intuitive and that's... There's a good way to make women that, cry? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he's like. Yeah. He's like that, but not in a bad way, yeah. but it's... In the yeah. best way possible, mm. you know. Tis joy. Uh, now, Dr. Funke, yes. you know, do we think that Dan is actually aware of how much his behaviour affects the other housemates? I think he has some awareness, and I think it's, it's a shame that we're not seeing the other side of Dan, as Matt has described, because he's just gone into this role, Detective Dan, in the house, trying to be an investigator. Some of the housemates find it quite irritating, but I think certain housemates, like Sophie, who are very truthful and not kind of boys, the twins will talk about it. But I think he has some awareness, but I don't think he has enough awareness to actually stop. Mm. I think it would be really great if Big Brother did a task where Dan would not have to interfere for 24 hours. Mm. He'd just have to sit, do, do any leadership skills. Do you think he could cope? Well, let's see. He might crumble. I don't know. <laughs> now, some housemates haven't enjoyed his domineering role. Uh, have a butchers at this. You know, I respect that you would. You said to me at the time that you felt like that, whereas Jack, just Jack and Jay would just think it and not say it. But if I'm thinking it, I don't think I need to say it because sometimes it just causes friction, like, especially no, in a house this small. No, because Sophie said it and didn't. But in a house friction. this small, I'm not going to try and start. It's not a problem, really. It's over now. They need to understand that I've got a son who's five years younger than them. I have been in the police for ten and a half years. I've dealt with horrible, nasty things. I've seen a lot of things. This is what the twins do not res they, they don't respect me enough for who I am as a person. They really yeah. don't. Wow. Uh, they don't respect him enough. M Matt, what is his problem with the twins? I think it's Joe. It's Jack's kind of fine, but Joe, it, he's always got the last say. He's always yeah. got the last say in the si on the subject. And Dan's, like, thinking, why do you always have to have that extra mm. edge? Like, just be quiet and that's what I think Dan's is getting to Dan like he's always having the last say and stuff it's very frustrating yeah. for him. I mean, normally if so he was on the street and someone had the last say he'd chuck him in the van and lock him up overnight <laughs> wouldn't he he <laughs> yeah, can't exactly. do that there. he, he can't, can't do, do that, do that. No. now Dr Funke why do they have such a problem with Dan the twins that is because I think Dan as he said he's got children he's got a son that's five years older than the younger twins than them, younger yeah. and he's feeling that they should be like his children they feel well no you're not my dad you are Dan a housemate so I think Dan's probably overstep the mark in the sense that he's moving away from being the housemate. No matter how old the difference of the ages, everyone is a housemate. And I think that's why we're seeing the conflict. And like you said, Matt, Joe likes to have the last word. But I also think Dan also likes yeah. to have the yeah. last word. And maybe they've met their match mm. and that's why they have that conflict. Well, he's constantly had his detective hat on and has questioned almost everything. And he's quite often right, particularly when the Michael, the actor. Matt, does he interrogate his friends at home as much <laughs> as he does the housemates? <laughs> no. Oh, no, I wouldn't say he does. Because like, when he's at work, he's at work. And when he's at home, He's at, like, he doesn't, right. he switches completely, switches off, and that's why it's weird watching this because he's like, What do you want for your supper? Why yeah. do you want jacket potatoes? <laughs> when we first started going out, like <laughs> now obviously we've been together for a while, he's kind of stopped. But when we first started going out, he was a bit like, he's a bit like Hold up, I've only gone out for a night. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. Now, in tonight's episode, we saw Dan try and take control of the argument between Callum and Charlie. So, Jackie, you know, is Dan now trying to take over? the mother of all, now that you're gone. Possibly, mm. possibly. We saw that he was telling Charlie to be quiet and stop whispering, and I suppose had I been there, I would have been the one to do that, <laughs> because they do do this, all, all you know, time. Hazel and Charlie, yeah. yeah. And he wanted to get some sleep, so, mm. yeah, he's the one now. I think he will, quite they frankly. They can't do it all. They can't be the mother and the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, do you, well, one problem could be that his domineering side could eventually lead to him being mm. booted out, couldn't it? Yeah, I think it's a fine line. So Dan has got to watch it, and he has mm. this little tendency that when he's not getting his own way, he whines. Mm. 
yeah. You can hear it in the pitch and tone of his voice. I'm sure it's yeah. uh, familiar to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is, in, it's so like counselling <laughs> session for Mark. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. but the, the, he just has to watch it, and um, it, and I think he had backup. You were his like, I you were yes, like his absolutely. partner, at, you know, yeah, yeah. in in, in the team. In so, yeah, really. so. We have to end it there. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Now. Enough of all of that. Yes. It's time to venture into the diary room and see what producers left on the cutting room floor. This is Diary Room and Cut Diary. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Don't take away my treasure. Big Brother, will you be providing any alcohol tonight? How do you think Big Brother will answer that question? Alcohol is provided, provided at Big Brother's discretion. Sam, Big Brother needs to request that you leave the task props in the diary room. What is this? That's correct. First Big of all, you see my trainer, now you take my football. Did I take my clothes as well? It is not red wine, it is not any other spirit, it is just hidden from everyone so that they don't drink it, so that Mum can use it as a cassis for her white wine. And that is literally it. I feel a bit sick. Why do you think you're feeling sick? Because I ate too many sweets and drank too much pop. Yesterday and today I just felt like complete shit. I just don't know what to do about it. And then you see everyone else having a laugh and a joke around you and you're sitting there you're thinking, oh God. Big brother, I would literally right now cut my big toe off for a fag. Literally. I don't know, I'm just... I'm in such... Is it a really down mood kind of thing? Hmm. How are you getting on with everyone? Um, yeah, a lot better. I think, I hope. So, yeah, yeah. This is, this is an unusual chat. This isn't the normal Big Brothery chat. I would... Uh, you know, I would, I would lay down in a puddle so Sam didn't have to get his feet wet. Sam is, um, I would sacrifice for Sam, definitely, because he's a good lad. You mentioned to Big Brother that you took some time on the entertainment stage. What did you do? <laughs> not a whole lot. I'm obviously not very entertaining. Um, I guess, what did I do? I, I wiggled about. I don't know, it's just something about him. It's just cute. You just want to grab his cheeks and go, ooh. Okay. Shut up, bud. Shut up, shut up. Tell me when. <laughs> the diary room door is now open. Bye. 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 Come on. Bye. Bye, Cannon. <laughs> yeah! Time and I can tell you it's going off the hook in here, isn't it? Look at these phones ringing, ring, ring, <laughs> ring, 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 ring. They're ready. They are ready. Who's first? Billy King from North Wales. Billy King from North Wales. Hi, LJ. Hi. Are you all right? Hello, hello, hello. Evening, all. Evening, evening. <laughs> Officer, how are you? <laughs> I couldn't give a stuff how he is. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> we could be here all night, AJ. What do you want to say about Big Brother? Ian, the lady's talking. That's rude to interrupt. <laughs> you tell him, Billy King. <laughs> and what do you want to say about Big Brother? We're running out of time. But seriously, Billy, seriously. I started the conversation with hello, 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 evening all, because that was my link into what I've got to say. I like it, Billy. I like <laughs> then it. say it! I'm going to say it, Ian. Calm down, you're going to have a heart attack. Exactly. He, he is as well. Look at him. Just <laughs> say it! We're running out of time! Right, OK. Thank I'm going to condense this as much as I can. <laughs> nobody, has, nobody has cottoned on at all to the crafty copper Dan. Nobody's cottoned on to him at all. Right. From, from the day one, he's suspicious automatically because that was his line of work that he was in. He's got to be suspicious of everybody. Yeah. And he's automatically gone in there. And to be honest with you, if I was in there, I'd be having fun and enjoying myself. And I wouldn't be looking into things in great depth. I'd just go along with it and go with the flow. But... He is not. What he's done was he bought an alliance and nobody can even see that he's built this alliance with the women. He's taken them out individually <laughs> in the garden, one by one. He has his sly fag break and he's planting seeds into their heads like, 
a day before nominations. And nine times out of ten, these women are nominating the people with Dan's planted into their heads. You're watching, okay. you're watching the Billy King Show on Channel 5. <laughs> you are, Ian. Hello Thank you. and welcome. Um, Mr <laughs> King, we've got to call it a day. Good night, AJ. and thank AJ. you. AJ. No, go away, no, no, who's on line two? <laughs> we have Dawn from Bristol. Hello, Dawn from Bristol. Hi. Let's let's dive straight into Big Brother, shall we? Yes, we can. <laughs> well, what have you got? Um, I wanted to talk about Jackie, actually. Yeah, yes. Um, I wanted to just comment on the fact that she needs to be a little bit more wary of Dexter, and I'm hoping she's watching back all the shows, because Judy got it completely right the other day, and she got it completely wrong, and I really, really am hoping that she goes and watches it, because... OK, Dexter, what do you think, Jackie? So I know I know what Dexter's like. I, I'm, I'm not stupid. I know exactly what he's up to, but, you know, there's nothing... Boys will be myself. boys! Boys yeah, will exactly. be boys! Thank you, Dawn! OK! Who's on, line, who's on line three? We've got Olivia from London. Hello, Olivia, Olivia. from London. Hi, how are you? Very I'm good. good, thank you. How are you? Good. What's your natter? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm just calling to talk about Dexter, and I don't really understand why everyone's giving him such a hard time and why everyone's thank being you. so mean. Isn't he? I, I think he's brilliant. What do you like about Dexter? I really fancy Dexter. I think oh, he's my word. <laughs> you fancy him? Yeah. And would you go on a date with him without him having yes. to pay you? Yes, I think he's gorgeous. What is it about him that's so special that, that gets you hot? Oh, I like I like his mannerisms. Yeah. I like I, I don't know. I think he's really but good looking. I think he's gorgeous. Does that look, doesn't it? I think I might possibly go gay for Dexter. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Then. I tell you I think what, he's Olivia. He's really cute. I, wow, Olivia, you have got a thing. You know, um, why you don't know. you come in? You know, come <laughs> in on the night that he's being evicted. Oh, please, I sad. would as well, honestly. <laughs> It's, wow. it's so nice to speak to a deviant. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, guys. Drop the phones. We are done. They don't like to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Put Mickey. the photos. We finished. Mickey Valentine. What's Please. coming up now, AJ? <laughs> I want to, to go home tonight. I know, I know. Still to come. We'll have all the latest goss from the new Safe House residents. Do not go anywhere or I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> to Big Brother's bit on the psych. Think of us as a counsellor to the main show, sorting out all of their problems and making them feel a whole lot better about themselves. I use drugs. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, wow, here's something to make you feel really good. Is it drugs? <laughs> no, it's an exclusive. I can't never make my mind up about Callum, because one minute I think... Oh, he's such a lovely, genuine guy. And when he stood up to the public last night, he was just really sweet and he was just really himself and he just seemed really real. And he was quite... Then I found him quite endearing. It was a really cute speech. And then other times, I think... I, I don't know with him um, still. It's just a funny one. Other times, I then think maybe he's got a sort of a, an aggressive streak. I can sort of just see it in his eyes and a few other people have sort of seen it. He must have felt like he was being attacked or people were sort of talking about him or at him. And I, don't, I hate the thought of someone feeling alone or being attacked and stuff like that, because I would hate it. So that's why I was playing my mind big time. But it's OK, I've, 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 I've just said sorry and, and that's it. We had a good chat at five o'clock this morning. Oh, my head. OK, so it's time to turn our attention to a Big Brother three-way. I'm talking Charlie, Callum and Dexter, of course, yeah. and the love triangle. Now that Mum's out of the picture, is there really any hope of either Callum or Dexter winning the affections of Charlie Travers? Well, Jackie. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, well, no. Didn't even ask. <laughs> Didn't even need to ask. Um, you know, what was it like turning that modern-day love story into a ballet performance in the Big Brother Garden? Oh, it was wonderful because I had uh, uh, my way with Callum and Dexter. I wanted to, to show that they were being, you know, well, not made fools of, but quite frankly, 
that's what they deserve, mm. both of them, and it was great fun doing it. And they were brilliant in it. I have yeah. to say, the expressions mm. were fantastic. Mm. Yeah. You know, it was, please, Charlie, and, and Dexter at one point was doing a crying <laughs> expression. It was brilliant, and it was fun to do, and I think they enjoyed it. Mm. They, they really did. enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, you know, they get, they you know, get even closer to Charlie for exactly. a little bit. Well, exactly, <laughs> they, they were loving it, absolutely every minute of it. Well, you know, Dr. Funke, who gave the most convincing performance, in your opinion? None of them. No? None of them. I mean, I'm not convinced by either of them. Right. Dexter is playing a game. And Callum, obviously, Charlie was the available one in the, the house out of the females, attaching himself onto her and saying he's dying love. None of them are convincing. So, no. obviously, that performance was a performance. Give Dexter a break. He's a nice oh, lad I and he fancies her. Give no. her a break. Give him a break. Ian, he fancies Hazel. Oh. But because yeah. Daly had Hazel, he decided to go with Charlie. OK, well, Kate, you know, you're into performance and all of that jazz. Um, who is playing a good character in the house? OK, well, they're all playing characters because they know they're going into Big Brother to be on telly. But um, they, they, some of them are now getting steady and their character's staying the same all the way through. Okay. It's settled down. But there's one person who isn't who's more than one character, and that is Callum. Oh. We've got a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde thing going on. He's all over the place. Mm. Jackie, you, you quite warmed to Dexter this week. What I did. Happened? I did. You know why? Dexter's a lost little puppy. Isn't he? He's OK. Dexter is harmless. I don't think Callum is. That's Interesting. The Interesting. That's the a little bit scared of our Callum. Now, here's a look at our romantic heroes before they went into the house. Tell Big Brother about the life of being a sugar daddy. Well, you basically go around acting like Charlie Big Bananas, and it's like you use girls like accessories, like designer watches, for instance. You know, so if one day I want to go out with a blonde, then. I'll get in contact with one of my blonde sugar babies. If you want to go out with a brunette, I'll get in contact with one of them. And each one has a different quality. So some are good for sex, some are good for conversation, some are good for the cute sort of girlfriend cuddling up with new onesies. And, you know, it's, that's it, really. What's your success rate like with the ladies? Do you know what? I don't, I don't want to tag ladies, man. I don't... I, I, don't, I suppose I am, but it's, it's more like if you enjoy sex and you've got... You've got the, the right package. You, you're going to get it. You're going to get some success. I mean, young, good looking, good physique, bit of banter about him. Um, it just, it, it, you know, it comes naturally. You don't really have to work for it, do you? But yeah, she was fit. <laughs> what are your numbers like? Pretty hefty, to be honest. Um, well, for my age, you know, define hefty. Over, well over 200 at the moment. Oh, who <laughs> <laughs> what a knob. Oh. I just absolutely love the fact that he was talking about himself in the same mm, person. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about Callum? Myself. Um, so, Jackie, after mm. watching that, yeah. do you still have more of a problem <laughs> with Callum than Dexter? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, Stupid Dexter's, question. It, it was, again, Dexter was harmless banter. That is very much more calculating. Mm. And I don't know if he mentioned, did, had he mentioned the mother and daughter he'd slept No, with? not just there. You can imagine, are we going to the house and hear that? Did I'm that sorry. never cross your mind as a possibility? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But even even if he made it up, what sort of guy makes up yeah. that 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 type of one that's lo uh, watched a lot of porn? I think. I, th I think you're probably right. Well, yeah. oh. well Ooh, let's let's I, let's not lock everyone who watches porn. Some people <laughs> end up with quite successful jokes <laughs> on Channel Five. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Funke, <laughs> how much control does Dexter have? How much control does I know? Ian distracts a me. window yes. into <laughs> Ian Lee's life there, everyone. So, how mm. much control does Dexter have in the house? Yeah. He has a lot of control. If we think about Dexter at the beginning of the of the show, he was kind of he didn't fit into the groups. He was kind of on the outskirts of the groups. Mm. Now he's got that sense of power. People are attaching. He's got Charlie. He's got Hazel. Dan has switched all of a sudden. He's going towards Callum, but mm. he still has that control because Charlie. I'm sorry to say, but I think she's got a little twinkle in her eye for Dex. Well, she oh. might have. Oh, my who knows? God. Well, who listen, knows? things got hot and steamy in tonight's show when Dexter got in the shower with Charlie, fully clothed, I might this add. Is it is. Take a look. Oh, I'm going to drop it. It's a nice sensation. Oh, 
That's bullshit. Ah, okay. <laughs> Amazing! That is good. Amazing! That is good. Look, Dr. Funke is Charlie rubbing Cam's face in it. Or Dexter's, rather. <laughs> well, I think, because there's been a few little arguments with Callum and with Dexter and so forth, but I think what Charlie's doing, and I hope she plays it safe, because I said she could get in the final, yeah. but if she doesn't, she plays it the way she's playing it now, it can cause a little bit of conflict, mm. conflict in the house. Mm. She is rubbing it in Callum's face. She knows that Callum likes her. And what do you do? Go under the shower, waiting for that kiss. She was waiting she for that was kiss. Really? Kate, what did you make of what just happened there? <laughs> well, um, all that was needed, really, was for Callum to finish the scene off, and it's Psycho, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> in the Jackie, shower. Jackie, you're only. Got, how have you raised this girl? You've gone two or three hours. She's jumping in the shower. It's just unbelievable. Ball. But she was jumping. I hardly call it steamy. <laughs> she was. She was covered in Nutella because she and yeah. Hazel had had a Nutella fight. She was trying to wash the Nutella off. She was drunk. And she saw Dexter standing there, possibly wanted to pull him in, so she got all the chocolate over his shirt. I don't know, but, you know, it was mm. harmless. But Callum's face was Wasn't priceless. It, it was. And Wasn't it, it says it all. It Thank does say it all. Thank you. Still to come, Ian will be snooping around the camera runs, and we'll have all the latest from the house. But first, here's a little taster of something that's on the menu. I think it may be food-related oh. next week. <laughs> She's a fat pitting on people. He would sell his own grandma. Really well. You look like a prostitute. I love you. I never really insult you, girl. You never washed one cup in that kitchen. I go nowhere. You are the most selfish, shallow person I see all the way. bit on the psych like a jackie travers interpretive dance we deliver all the right moves and enter a standing ovation every night of the week <laughs> or maybe not they're still all sat down here's today's news <laughs> at 1:25 this afternoon hazel let charlie know what she was really thinking and trust me she didn't hold back oh, I'm Bored of everybody. Nobody's oh. interesting me anymore. Oh. I just want to cause trouble or something. I'm bored. This is what happens to me mm. when I get bored. I've had a it's week now of yeah. nobody entertaining me. I'm not interested by anybody in this house yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody interests me to the slightest degree in this house anymore. If anything, actually, do you know what? You feel I'm the opposite to you. You feel like that about everyone else. I feel like that about myself today. Yeah. No, I'm just sick of everybody. I wish everybody just shut up. I've taken everything from every person that I possibly can, if you know what I mean. Do you know like a yoghurt that you squeeze out of the tube? Mm. I've squeezed everybody out of the tube. Mm. This is the real me, I'm mischievous. Or when I let go, it's not even me drunk, because I wasn't drunk, it's just me when I let go. Yeah. Well, let's put Jackie back in there if Hazel's had enough. Well, next up, you can't say you don't, we, well, you can't say that we don't treat you here at Bots, because we do. And at 2.25, the housemates had the chance to win some treats in today's task. And guess which two housemates came face to face? And more like back to back. Hazel and Gina, time will start when the first klaxon goes. As both housemates were as greedy as each other, they win nothing. Oh, thanks, Sam. As both housemates acted selflessly, they have won six eggs for the whole house.
Congratulations, Dexter. Your selfishness has paid off. Dexter should now choose which housemate he would like to invite to his romantic picnic later. I'm going to take Dan. I'm blushing. <laughs> I knew it was Dan you had the feelings for all along, Dexter. <laughs> Wow, Kipo from Dexter. And finally, did we mention Dexter, Charlie and Callum are involved in some kind of love triangle? Uh, well, at 3.30 this afternoon, some of the housemates made it clear they just about had enough of it all. Why is Charlie even buying into it or why don't she just not bother doing, talking about it? I'm angry about it. It's, it's, it's frustrating just, me. I'm bored oh, of it. Yeah, no, no, call call just, someone up and say, I don't, just stop it's it. Just, I don't like it's you. Just, it's just leave it. I know. But there is course. no escape. Well, I just said there's no escaping it because no, everywhere you go, No, especially in here. You can't. Yes. And when they especially close the, the garden. garden. How can she say that he categorically doesn't like her? She he said just something. She said the opposite. She said that. She knows. She said those words categorically. He's saying he doesn't like you now. Take He's saying he doesn't what, like you now. Then Charlie said what? Just saying that you, you're, you're saying that you 100% don't think he's got feelings for you. 100% no, he doesn't. Oh, there's nowhere to go. Like, there's only <laughs> two rooms to go in. And, like, look, look, in both Sophie's rooms just sat there and gone. About. I'm just like... This typical Sophie, she went, Dexter, do you have to... Blah, blah, blah. And he denied it, even though he's been going around for the last month saying that he secretly loved you. Yes, yeah. and then he, she went, Charlie, do you have any Tell feelings, anything like that for Dexter? And I went, no, just then and there. So that is, like I've said... Did he say that? I've just said it then and there to you everyone. You said no to everyone. You've got no interest to, in him. To in there. But have we clarified whether he's oh, interested in you? Oh, ah! Well, they just all need to chill out and have a brew and dip a biscuit in it while they're at it. Uh, that's today's news. But what is happening right this minute, Ian? Talk to me. It, it's unusual because something is happening. Look, look what they're, they're trying to fix the um, uh, the coffee table that's made out of an old trunk. Now, how did it break? How? Look, look who's coming out of it. Look, look, look. Sophie's in there. <laughs> they spent the last five minutes playing a game where one of the the uh, big lads, one of the twins, got to, tried to put himself in the trunk and shut it in. Couldn't do it. Charlie got in next. Uh, and then, interestingly, Callum came along and kind of pushed her head down into it a bit and then shut it. <laughs> then Callum... This is true. And then, this is, the last few minutes have been brilliant. Then Callum got into the trunk and he broke the trunk. So the lid's off. Gina's had a go. She couldn't do it. Sophie... Oh, Gina's going to go back. This is genuinely brilliant. <laughs> they should do a whole hour of this. Can Gina fit her boobs in that box? <laughs> <laughs> she can fit her boobs. It's her ego that uh, she's struggling to squeeze <laughs> in there. Up, a, lot of them, a lot of them are dressed in red and black. I, I know it's the twins' birthday today. Today, so I don't know if they, if, if they had like a red and black themed yeah, party. Yeah, all dressing up like Dennis Gina's in Menace. red and black, Hazel's in it, <laughs> Sophie's uh, in it. Look, one thing though, this, this, and this will offend Jackie. Right. Look at the floor there. Look how filthy that floor is. Uh. Over there there's banana skins and rubbish. Are these animals or human beings? It's <laughs> disgusting. Stop dicking around with the coffee table. Go and tidy up the bloody kitchen, you thugs. <laughs> For goodness sakes, it's outrageous. Awful. Well, well, you know, calm down, Ian, calm down. It makes me angry, AJ. It makes me really angry. I know. They should get a cleaner or something. Can they afford a cleaner with the budget? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go and watch this. You you, you go back and do the, the end of the show. I will do. Enjoy it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ian. Thank you, AJ. Bye-bye. Oh, hi, Ian. Hello. So many Ians in my life, and they you all spread such joy. Come on, sprinkle some well, digital I can, I can sprinkle me. you with a Tusky exclusive. All right. Uh, that's on the website. Uh, as I mentioned last night, you can vote and affect the next shopping task. We've already had over 5,000 people voting, <laughs> and you've got roughly 24 hours left. It ends um, Sunday night, so get online and click on the link that says the right answer on channel5.com slash brother and vote in the task, and you get to affect reality. Amazing. Awesome. You've got the power, guys. Mm -hmm. Use it and abuse it. Abuse it. Anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, we've been talking online, obviously, about the love triangle. I know. And we've got a few people's thoughts on it. Uh, Brigden McElwee says, I would like Charlie and Callum to be locked away together overnight for a task. Charlie wow. loves Callum, and I think they would snog. Do you think so, really? I, I think don't. she liked him Brigden in the beginning, does. and then it's all fizzled out. Yeah, it's a, well, Guardian Hawk says the twins have got more chance of getting with Charlie than Dreamer Dexter or Callus <laughs> Callum. Oh, dear. They've been good uh, alliteration there. I think very good alliteration. <laughs> very good alliteration. Yeah. I think Dexter's got a chance. He, I, I think he's too. got more of a chance. Um, he could have puckered up to her last night. Well, yeah. tonight in the shower. That was a missed opportunity. Yeah, missed opportunity. Um, Deborah Black says that she thinks Sam fancies Cal Charlie too, but is too shy to say anything. 
Oh. But I don't know. You never. Everyone's after Charlie. Charlie's Everyone. the one. Charlie it's is the one. It's in the jeans, isn't it, JT? Popular, popular mm -hmm. woman. Well, thank you, Ian. Oh, don't forget the live feeds online right now. Till oh, two. Yeah. Till oh, two. Yeah. How right could now. I even forget? Yeah. That's all we have time for tonight, people. Thanks to all of my guests. It's been an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow at midday for Rylan Super Side for Celebrity Sunday with special guests scouting for girls, Liberty X's Kelly and MC Harvey Young. Latest alligators. <laughs>